Hi, you're listening to Book Chat with author Vivian E. Moore. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. Hello and welcome to Book Chat. I am your host, author Vivian Moore. I hope everyone had a great week and I hope you're having a great weekend wherever you are uh, in this great country of ours. All right. So uh, last week was my first week back from being uh, under the weather and I am still not 100%, but I feel so much better than I did before. And uh, so I'm ready. Okay. Are y'all ready? All right, then let's go. All right. So uh, the title of today's show is Prepared Awareness. And the topic is becoming a better writer. And who doesn't want that? Um, You know, I don't know about you, but I always uh, did better on test days uh, when um, when I was uh, well prepared for them. And and that applies to any area of life. Um, You know, you never should approach anything with blinders engaged. Um, It's better to have a realistic view of what to expect than none at all. All writers have goals and expectations of becoming great someday. Um, And, you know, and there's nothing unreasonable about that. However, prepared awareness is vital in every situation. Um, I think that it would be so remiss of anyone who went into anything, project, life, whatever it is, uh, without doing some, um, some background study, without being completely aware, being aware of what you're getting yourself into. I mean, that's just a foolish person who would, um, step off a curb without looking both, you know, in both directions, um, you know, before taking a step. So this is how I want you to approach, um, you know, becoming a, a better writer, becoming who you were meant to be. And, you know, and that includes being prepared for it. Okay. Well, you may ask, how do you prepare, prepare uh, to become a writer? Well, there are a lot of things associated with that. And, uh, and so I would like to share uh, the rules of becoming who you always dreamed of being and because it's so simple and they will make you shine brighter if you follow them. Okay. So are you ready? All right. So let's get started. All right. So rule one is reading simple. (laughs) I mean, it's it's just that simple. Um, the more you read, uh, the more it will expand your vocabulary and, uh, and it, and it will expose you, uh, to the art of creativity um, you know, when I was um, at the beginning stages of becoming who I am as an author, um, I stopped reading. And I can be honest and say that. And the reason why I did that was because I didn't want to influence what I wrote. Um, I wanted it to be, um, I wanted it to be fresh and 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 new and um, organic as possible. And, uh, but what I didn't realize is that I was shortchanging myself because the best way to learn, to hone your craft is to read. Um, not because you intend to plagiarize someone else's writing, but because you want to become a stronger writer. You want to become a better writer. So that means you need to read, read everything available. I don't even, I I don't care if it's a magazine, read it, read it from cover to cover because you learn the technique of writing, and that's important. Um, and, and you, and, and then you will develop your own technique by doing that. So that's rule number one: reading. Okay. Rule two is keep it simple. 
Um, yes, you want to impress your readers, but don't overuse adjectives and big words. Um, you know, you have to, you have to realize and always be cognizant of who is reading your material, depending on what genre you're writing in. If it's fiction, then, I mean, that may be for just about anyone who's at an age where, you know, they're, they can read and understand what they're reading. So, you know, you don't want anything to be over anyone's head. If you're writing fiction, you know, you're not writing for a medical journal or you're not writing, um, you know, for the psychology or what, you know, feel that it may be other than just fictional writing. OK, so keep it simple. All right. Uh, rule number three is remember your audience. OK, uh, the tone and language should match uh, if you're writing for if you're writing for adults. Or if you're writing for children, then you need to use that same technique. Um, you know, you um, you need to put a lot of thought into it. Um, you know, if, it, if you're writing a book for adults and the and it reads like a third grade uh, book, <laughs> you need to step it up. That's keeping things uh, too simple. Okay, so uh, you need to determine. Uh, the 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 reading level, the skill level uh, of of your reader, uh, based on what you're writing about. So if you're writing a a child's book, then it makes sense to be you know super super simple. But if you're writing for adults, then you can take it up a notch. Okay, you just you could determine you know by by whatever genre that you're writing in. All right, okay. So rule number four is practice makes perfect. My mother. I mean, she drilled that into my head. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. And and I still remember it to this day and, and believe that I always will remember it. You know, regardless of how it may seem for some uh, successful writers, you don't always get it on the first try. And neither did they. Okay, so um, I'm pretty sure they had a whole lot of busts uh, before they had some good bangs. Okay. So um, just remember that, just practice, you know, even if you, if you just want to write a short story, you know, just write something silly, but, um, but make sure that it's punctuated well, um, you know, that you've used the correct grammar and all of those things, you know, just, just to, um, um, you know, just as a, a, um, a learning guide for yourself. Okay. All right. So number five is rule number five is watch your grammar and spelling. (laughs) Some of us are guilty of writing how we speak. Uh, you know, if you use slang or relaxed grammar, um, and, I, and I say relaxed grammar instead of using, um, I'm not even going to go there. Okay, I'm just going to leave it at relaxed grammar. Um, it could infiltrate your writing. Um, you know, I, I listen to uh, speech patterns and, um, and I've read um, enough, um, reports and, 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 and things of that nature, um, to where I could pretty much gauge, um, the intelligent, intelligence level of the person who wrote the report and, um, and they wrote it just how they spoke, you know, with their everyday language. It's the language that they use, uh, you know, when they were relaxed and, probably at home, but you know, that doesn't fly, uh, in the real world. You have to step it up. You have to be professional. Okay. Always be professional. All right. So rule number six is always, always proofread what you write. It's also a good idea to let someone you trust with editing knowledge, a basic editing knowledge, read it for you. Um, and not only let them read it for you, but you can read it out loud to yourself. And there's also a, a function if you are working in um, Word, using a word processor, whether it's Windows or um, or maybe Google, uh, you know, whatever, whatever word processing app you're using. A lot of them have, um, they have these little features where you can dictate or you can, um, you can have, um, a computer uh, generated voice of uh, one, not necessarily computer generated, but a, a uh, computer loaded voice 
read uh, read your work to you. And so that way you can get a um, a great understanding, a great feel of, uh, you know, the direction that you need to take by listening to um, what you've written being read back to you. Now, I love listening to audio books. Um, you know, it's a little bit different than sitting down and reading the book yourself. But um, but still, you know, when I listen to those uh, those audio books, they really, 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 um, you know, put those characters in perspective for me and they really come alive. They, they, they sort of, you know, jump off those pages, you know, when they're, when those scenes are being acted out uh, by the person narrating the story, they're not just reading it, you know, they, they are becoming those characters and then they're, they're playing out those parts for you. So I love that. So that, like I said, it's a, it's a good idea to just, to let the, um, to have the story read to you. So that way you can get an overall feel of it, of the characters, their expressions and all of those things. It's, it's very worthwhile to do that. OK. All right. So uh, number rule number seven is write drafts. OK. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, before you actually um, get into, uh, you know, the chapters and writing the chapters and things of your story, um, you know, just to do, do a couple rough drafts first. Um, you know, those first drafts usually highlight strengths and, and weaknesses, uh, you know, with your writing. And, and in most cases, they determine uh, the story flow and the plot flaws. OK, so just excuse me, just do that because that, that can also uh, be a advantage for you. All right. So rule number eight is ask for feedback. And don't wait until the release date to do this, okay? Don't wait till after you've already published a book to do this, you know. Then you are at the mercy of, of the sometimes often brutal reviewers who won't be kind, okay? They will be honest, and that's what you want. You want the honesty, okay? But anyway, um, advance advice uh, before you get those reviews are so necessary to, um, to, to help you to become a better writer. Okay. We, that, that's what you want. That's what I want. And I'm pretty sure that's what you want too. Okay. So rule number nine is never write when you're tired or hungry. Be sure you are well fortified in both areas before you start writing. The brain or body doesn't function well if they aren't at their best, okay? Remember that. Feed your body because that fuels your brain, okay? All right, rule number 10, book sales and reviews don't always determine your writing talent. However, it may cause you to question your ability compared to others, but it doesn't make you less of a writer, okay? Sometimes, um, low book sales has nothing to do with, uh, how well the book has been written. Sometimes it has a lot to do with how it's marketed. Okay. If readers can't find your work, then they can't read your work. Okay. So make sure that, um, you know, that you, um, that you, uh, get someone to help you market it, your book, because that is so essential, uh, in getting those book sales up. All right. And so, um, those are the, those are the 10 rules of, uh, of, uh, you know, becoming a better writer. But what I want to leave with you is this determination, dedication, and discipline in the end are what will make you the best at your craft. Reading is not only fundamental, but necessary in achieving your writing goals. All right, folks. So that is the show for today. And I hope that it helped you in, in some great or small way. Uh, but even if it didn't, um, I thank you for listening because that is so essential for me. All right. So before I let you go, I want to make sure that I give you these URLs. And the first one, of course, is to Spreaker. And that is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash author Vivian e. Moore. Uh, you can follow me across all social media and that includes Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay. And Instagram is by invitation only. You can also check out my website 
That is at authorvivianemore.com or authorehshepherd.com. And uh, my blog site is at https colon forward slash forward slash vivianemore.blogspot.com. Okay. So uh, if you listen to the, my podcast on the regular, then you already know all the places uh, where you can listen to book chat with author Vivian anymore without me having to, um, you know, throw you out the, the different uh, platforms uh, where you can listen to the show. Uh, but it's always helpful, you know, to get that nudge in the right direction. So that's what I want to do. Okay. So of course, Spreaker, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, YouTube, SoundCloud, Giles Saving, Audible.com, Verbal, and Luminary. And um, anywhere a uh, podcast or, or um, offered, that is where you can find Book Chat with Author Vivian E. Moore. Okay? So uh, tomorrow is worship day, and I hope that you're planning to attend church somewhere. Uh, or if you prefer to stay home and worship, just, you know, um, just do that. Okay? And, uh, you know, in, invite your family and your friends, uh, you know, to visit. And to be safe while doing that, okay? Um, you know, wear your mask and wash your hands and social distance. You know, I can't say that enough because, I mean, it's just part of the, part of our world. And we don't know how long that's going to be, um, you know, before we won't have to do that anymore, okay? So, but until that happens, just do that. And also, always be mindful of, of your family, your friends, and, and your neighbors, um, you know, to, to tell them how much you care about them or if you care about them. And that's what I always try to do before I wrap up each and every show to tell you how I feel about you. So on that note, I love you. I hope you love me back until the next time you hear my voice. God bless you and goodbye. Loved what you've heard on this week's episode? Well, well, the answer is simple. It would mean the world to us if you could head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review and feedback. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow our podcast and achieve even greater things. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, son. Hey, Mom, what you doing? I just finished doing my show.